Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today I'm going to show you how you can connect up your computer to all the TVs in your house. So here we have the monitor, here we have one TV. Over here we have another. Through here we have the kitchen TV, which is also showing what's on the computer. And over here we have the main TV. So why would you want to do this? Well, years ago I had things like the Roku Media Player and I used to set up like a laptop onto the TV. But really nowadays I just seem to watch internet based stuff all the time. So whether that's YouTube or watching films, Netflix, Now TV, that kind of stuff. So rather than having all these different media players around the place and laptops and stuff, I want just one computer that will connect up all the TVs so then I can still do my work on that computer but my kids can watch a film in this room for example or you don't have to worry about a particular TV being a smart TV so this TV here although it's a flat screen it's a big 43 inch it's not a smart TV so it doesn't do much but by connecting it up to the computer you can do anything now I've always had problems when I'm using like mobile phones for example connecting to your uh, TVs and uh, the media players you're using app based things and it doesn't seem to work as well as just having things on the computer itself so for example if you want to watch BBC iPlayer or if you want to watch like a Demand 5 or Channel 4 on Demand all those things work really well on the PC but as soon as you start trying to get them on your phone and stuff they're harder to use or they don't seem to have the same content even Netflix I can search for stuff really easy on the PC but when trying to do it on, uh, on a smart TV for example it doesn't work as well so what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you the diagram that I've got and uh, that shows a layout in my house and then I'm actually going to show you the layout of the cables under the stairs so hopefully you will understand it more. One other nice little trick that I didn't show you is if I was to go down to this switch here and change it it will also work on my Xbox One as well. So now I've got my Xbox One working there, working here and in every other room. Over there. And here. So you haven't just got to be limited to connecting your computer up. If you put a HDMI switch in the mix at the beginning, then you can have your DVD player connected up to it as well. So really this, this setup should be all you need to be able to distribute everything that you want. Okay, so I'm going to bring it back to the PC now. So by pressing this button on the HDMI switch, it switches the inputs to the PC. Now, you can set it up like this and you'll have your PC screen, but this doesn't allow you to work on here because if, for example, I was to put a film on this screen, it will come up on all the other screens and then I won't be able to work. So what you need to do is, rather than duplicate the display, you need to extend it. So if you go down to this icon in the corner down here and click on it, if you go to project and then what you need to do is at the moment it's on duplicate so it's it's mimicking all the TVs on this particular screen it's just duplicating it but I'm going to go to extend and what this will do is it will then have this screen here as my main screen that I can work on and then all the other screens will be extended yeah so what I can do is when you drag your mouse which is here when you drag it over can you see it goes onto the screen here? So watch it go between the screens there. Yeah? And then you can set up a new page here. So for example, if the kids wanted a video, now, just for the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna put one of my own up there. Let's drag this one over onto this screen. Can you see it dragging over? Hi there, my name is Vince from mrtelephone.co.uk and in this Make that video big. today, we're gonna take apart the master socket. And now, that video, so I can still do my work here, so I can close that down there. I can still do my work and go to Internet Explorer and do whatever I need to do. But here, I've got the video working. Here I've got the video working. And in every other room, I've got the video working. 
a ringing capacitor, and this one here does not okay. have any bell And as you can see, it pushes through the sound as well. Right, now if you were working here, you don't really want this noise in the background, so that's not a problem. You can just turn off this TV here, and if you wish, you can turn off this TV here. On this one, and it will still work in the other room. So it's still working in the kitchen. Service resistor. So for the ones that have been around for the past few years, they got And it will still work in here as well. So the idea is the kids can be watching TV in here. Uh, I can be doing my work in the other room, and I can put on you know whatever film they want to watch on Netflix or now TV. Or this is great if, for example, I haven't. But if you've got if you're into Cody. Well, this is going to be ideal because you can distribute this throughout the whole house. One thing I forgot to mention was that if you've got speakers set up with your computer connected to your headphone jack, you are going to have to unplug the headphone jack because when you plug in the headphone, it overrides the sound on the HDMI. So on the TVs, you know, in the other room and stuff, you're not going to hear the speakers working. So you have to unplug them because if you leave them plugged in the sound is going to be working through these speakers and the sound isn't traveling down the HDMI because remember HDMI's carry picture and sound so if you have a headphone jack unplug it. So I'm going to show you the setup on this bit of paper first and then I'm actually going to show you the setup on my in my house with the cables and the switch and the splitter and hopefully between that it will make sense. Now, in my house I have run HDMI cables everywhere, but if your house has Cat 5e or Cat 6 network run everywhere, so cables, then you can get HDMI over ethernet adapters. So some of the a lot of the cheaper ones you need two cables per HDMI length but you can get expensive ones where it will push the HDMI signal just down the one Cat 5e or Cat 6 cable. So if you haven't got HDMI cables running around your house, but you have got a network of Cat 5e or Cat 6 cables, then your option is gonna be easier to do the HDMI over ethernet. So just type that into Google and you will see all the adapters that you, uh, uh, that you can buy. When I do get around to putting this video onto my website, I will put some links for like the HDMI splitter and the switch and the adapters that you can get. Right, so basically we have we have a computer here, okay? And I've also got an Xbox or you could have a PlayStation, but you don't have to have that, that's just optional. So for example, you can plug in anything into this switch here and when you plug it into this, it would distribute it round the house. So in my instance, I've got a computer and an Xbox One. So what happens is, with the computer, you've got a VGA cable that feeds the monitor. And I'll show you that in a minute when I show you the actual setup. And then I've got a HDMI cable that just used to just feed the one TV. So I could do my work. So basically before, I used to do my work here, and then I used to like watch Breaking Bad or whatever on Netflix here to distract me from my work. But a lot of the times, the kids want to watch stuff. And it's just hassle because certain TVs, the Roku be connected on, certain TVs would have Virgin Media. And I just like this one setup now where they can say they want to watch something and then I can just put it on this screen here which would distribute it to the other rooms and then I haven't got to worry about it. Yes, it means that I can't watch what I want on here, but obviously that's a drawback. I've only got the one computer here and I'm just connecting up to all the TVs. But you know, you can get around this by having more computers. But uh, back to this diagram now. So before I just had the computer VGA cable to the monitor and one HDMI cable going to TV1. But now what I've got is, again, the VGA cable to the monitor, that stays the same, but this HDMI cable goes into an input of the HDMI switch. And I've also got an Xbox One S that goes into the input of the HDMI switch. Then the switch has, so basically this switch has five inputs and one output. So I've only got two inputs connected. Now, the output goes via HDMI cable into a HDMI splitter into the input of a HDMI splitter. And whatever goes into the input will then get replicated, in my instance, to four outputs because the splitter is one in, four out. And then from here, it goes to all the different TVs. Now, the TV in the main room, I've then also had to add another switch because my TV's only got two, that's the big TV, has only got two 
HDMI inputs and yet I want Virgin Media connected to one, I want another Xbox One connected to one and I want this PC connected to one so that means three. So my Xbox goes into HDMI 2 and then, sorry, my Xbox goes into HDMI 1 and then I've got a switch connected to HDMI 2 which then allows me to plug in that Virgin Media into the input and the PC cable, you know, this cable that goes via the splitter into the switch as well but I'll show you that when I when I do my setup so there you go so it's actually quite straightforward so you've just if we forget about the PlayStation a minute you've just got the computer you could just have the computer go into a VGA cable to the monitor and then all your computer might have two HDMI's mine's quite an old computer so there's only one HDMI and one VGA and then you could have that going straight into the splitter and then just going off to your TVs. I've made it slightly more complicated because I also want to distribute the Xbox as well. So that's why it has to go via the HDMI switch. So uh, yeah, so into the switch, out of the switch, into the splitter, and then from the splitter to all the different TVs. So let's show you, let's show you that in the actual, a real example. Okay, so in the back, of my PC here, I have the VGA cable that goes straight up into the monitor here. And then I've got the HDMI cable, the white cable here, that goes around and into one of the inputs of my switch. Then I've got my Xbox One S with a HDMI cable coming out of it. This is HDMI cable, and that goes into another input of the HDMI switch. And then this grey cable here is the output, and this is the cable that goes. This grey cable here is the one that goes over to my HDMI splitter which is under the stairs so all these cables go back to under the stairs so let me show you under the stairs right so we're now under the stairs and if you have a look these are the HDMI splitters I have got two of them because one does distribute my set top box uh, this is a kind of a leftover from from years ago but I don't really use this much now so I might think about another option for this one perhaps another PC or something but uh, yeah so basically the grey cable that you've seen in the other room goes into the inputs there and then can you see there's one two three four outputs so you can get bigger switches you can get like one in with eight out or you can get two in eight out that you can swap you know have different combinations but these are just cheap ones that you get from Amazon and eBay I think they're about 25 to 30 pound but so the gray cable goes into here and then whatever goes in will come out on the four outputs so it will just copy exactly what goes into all these outputs here. So then I'm going to have one going back to the TV next to my monitor, one going to the back room TV, one going to the kitchen TV, and one going into the living room TV. That's the main big TV that you've seen. Uh, now we're back behind the computer again. So as you can see, another grey lead that goes out of the output of the HDMI splitter goes into the input off the back of the TV into HDMI 1. Now on the back of this TV, again, white cable into one of the HDMIs. Kitchen TV, again, white cable into the HDMI port. Okay, and now we're on the big TV in the main room and the white cable from the HDMI splitter goes into one of the inputs and then I've also got my Virgin Media set-top box which is under the stairs as well you know the one that was connected to the other splitter into another input here and then the output this black and grey HDMI goes up and in to the back of my uh, into one of my HDMI ports so basically I have the Xbox One this version here I've got that connected straight into HDMI 1 and in HDMI 2 I've got the lead. Now it's hard to see, I've had to sellotape them up because I've had these when the kids were younger they ran behind here and yanked the cables and I've damaged the sockets on them but, uh, but they still work fine luckily. So, uh, so that's it, so basically if I want to flick, if I want to switch between the HDMI, uh, between the Virgin Media set-top box 
and the PC, all I have to do is I can either press that button on the switch or it comes with a little remote control and you can plug in your little IR, your little infrared little receiver here which goes up to one of these. So there's, there's two of them, I can't remember what the other one's for, but I think the other one's for Virgin, yeah, to change the Virgin Media channels, the set top box. So all you have to do is on this one here, I've got it all labelled up because it is confusing, especially if you have people visiting and stuff, you know, like relatives and stuff, they haven't got a clue what's going on. So just label up things and then it's easier. They don't have to be bothering you every five minutes. But if we have a look here, at the moment I'm on the computer, but if I was to switch to number four, yeah, and now you can see the input's gone to four and now it's gone over to my Virgin Media. And then if I want to go back to the computer again, I've got it connected to number five. And there it is there. And it's nice having the switch at the very beginning of the source. You know, if you have the switch, like on a diagram, at the very beginning, then before the HDMI splitter, that then allows you to switch between all those different inputs. So on these cheap switches, and these, are, I think they're only about, I think they're only five or ten pounds, uh, they it will allow you to connect up to five different things to distribute it around the house. So it's really useful having it before. Okay, and obviously like with the computer, I can't change anything here now. I have to go next door, but the idea is that I will set up a film and then, you know, an hour and a half later, I can then go and turn the film off. But I haven't got one myself to test, but you can get, obviously you can get like wireless Bluetooth keyboard and mouses. But I've also, uh, I haven't done any research into it yet, but I know you can get like long range wireless keyboard and mouses. I believe they use like 2.4 gigahertz. And they, from the little bit that I've read, they can go up to over 30 feet. So that's a good, you know, that's uh, approximately 10 meters. So 10 meters is probably gonna get me from that back room into this room here. And if they really do work, I don't know if they do or not, maybe they have only a, got a range of maybe a few meters once they start going through walls. But if they do have a range, I could be sat here with the keyboard and mouse, you know, if I was to especially get one with the mouse trackpad built into the keyboard, then I could be just using it here to, uh, you know, put on the next movie or put on some YouTube videos or stuff like that. So it is, uh, it is good, obviously with the, when you get the keyboard and the mouse, it doesn't mean that you'll be able to watch something different in here than you will in your kitchen. If you've got the PC connected, whatever's on that PC in the back room will be watched throughout the whole house. You can't watch, I can't watch Breaking Bad on the PC in the back room and somebody else watch Doctor Who or whatever in this room here. Everything has to be watched. Remember, it's just duplicating the same picture. Also, just to clarify, you're not forced to watch the PC in every single room. Obviously, all the other rooms, you can just still watch your normal TV like you normally do. Yeah, it's only when you go to the specific source. So, for example, on this one, I've got it plugged into HDMI 1, and I've just called it Computer and Xbox. So when I go to Computer and Xbox, then it will come on. So obviously, you select it in each room that you want to be able to watch it. But for me, this is the best setup because it just gives me that freedom to do different things you know, in, in different rooms depending on who wants to watch what. So hopefully you found that video useful. I appreciate you might have to pause a few times on that diagram to get your head around it. But uh, yeah, hopefully between a diagram and looking under the stairs and stuff, you have a better idea of how to do it yourselves. Okay, take care. Thanks now.